In this video, I'm going to be explaining probability and how to use probability to determine possible outcomes from an experiment. The probability of an event, there are three terms you do need to know. The possible results of an experiment will be considered the outcome. The set of all possible outcomes of the experiment is a sample space, and any sub-collection of that sample space is an event. So for example, um, if you wanted to roll a dice, obviously you're looking for all the possible results of that experiment, so you're looking for the outcomes of rolling a dice. A die has six numbers on it, so if you think about all the possible outcomes of rolling a die, you could have a one, a two, a three, four, five, or a six. And then any sub-collection of that subspace would be an event. So case would be like, how, what's the probability of you rolling a three? So that is a sub-collection. You're looking for a specific event of rolling a three. So this is the formula, the number of outcomes in the event, divided by the number of the sample space. Now, there's two things to know. There is a chance that it could be an impossible event and a certain event. If the probability is zero, that means the event can't even occur. For example, if I wanna know, what's the probability of rolling an eight with one die? That it's an impossible event. You, there's not a possibility of you being able to roll an eight. And then another would be uh, the event, if the event must occur, then it is a certain event, which would be an equal of one. The probability of one is basically 100% of the time it will occur. So if I say, what's the probability of getting a heads or a tails from a coin? Well, that's 100% of the time because when you flip a coin, of course you're gonna get a heads or a tails, which means it is certain for it to happen. So let's do an example. A card is drawn from a deck. What's the probability that it's an ace? Well, in a deck of cards, you have four aces. You have the ace of diamonds, you have the ace of hearts, you have the ace of spades, and you have the ace of clubs. So the probability of the event happening is four times. And then it wants to know what's the probability of the entire sample space. Well, how many cards are in a deck? There are 52 cards in a deck. And then you can reduce by dividing by four and your chances are one out of 13 times. So one out of every 13 cards should give you a probability of one ace. So you have two six-sided dice that are tossed. What's the probability that the total of the dice, meaning if you add the, the numbers together, you will get seven? Well, the, to roll like a dice, you could have like a one and a one. You could roll a one and a two. You could roll a one and a three, a one and a four, a one and a six. You could roll a two and a one, a two and a two, a two and a three, a two and a four, okay? There's actually 36 different ways. Why? Because you have six dice on, uh, six numbers on one die, six numbers on the other die, which means you have 36 total combinations of rolling two die. Now, how in the world can you add up to get seven from that? Well, you could roll a one and a six. You could roll a two and a five. You could roll a three and a four. You could roll a four and a three, a five and a two, and you could roll a six and a one. How many choices or how many chances are that? Those are six different possibilities. So you have six ways of rolling a seven, and you have 36 different combinations. So one out of every six times, you would probably roll a pair of dice that uh, will give you a seven. Next, probably of an event. The maker of a popular chocolate factory has released information about the overall color proportions in its production of candy. A single candy is selected at random from a newly opened bag. What is the probability that the candy is red? So these are all of the probabilities already of choosing a brown, of choosing a red, of choosing a yellow, uh, and so forth. So you want to know what's the probability that the candy is red? Well, the probability is obviously 0.2. Or you could say it is 2 out of 10, which you could reduce to 1 fifth if you want to change from a decimal to a fraction. Let me move myself over a little bit. Uh, a single candy is also selected at random. What is the probability that the candy is not brown? All right, well, if brown is a 0.3 shot, then for it to not be brown would be a 0.7 shot. Now, why is that? If you remember, probabilities have to add up to 100%, or if it's in decimals, it has to round up to one. 
0.3 plus 0.2 plus 0.2 plus 0.1 plus 0.1 plus 0.1 gives you the number one. That is 100%. 30% are brown, 20% are red, and so forth. So if 30% are brown, that means 70% or 0.7 must be any of the other colors. A mutually exclusive event is when you have two events that have nothing in common for their outcome. For example, if I want to know the probability of choosing a king or a queen from a standard deck of cards, well, there is not a card that is both a king and a queen, which means you don't have to worry about them being in common. You could just say, well, we know that there's four kings, just like there's four aces, and we also know that there's four queens, just like there's four aces, which means the probability would be 8 over 52, which you can reduce to be 2 over 13. Another chance would be choosing a heads or a tails from a flipped coin. Well, you have two possibilities. You're choosing, if you choose a head or if you choose a tails, there's two choices that you could, uh, that are possible. So therefore, you have a one out of two shot depending on what it is that you chose. So, the formula for the probability of the union of two sets of whether they're mutually exclusive or not would be the union of A and B would be the probability of A plus the probability of B minus any time that they are in common. Any time that they're in common. If they're mutually exclusive, like we talked about just a minute ago with the king or the queen, then all you have to do is just add up those terms. Where you could find something that could be in common would be like, what's the probability of choosing an ace or a heart? Why would that be one of these first one? Is because they actually have something in common. You actually have the ace of hearts. And so you have to subtract any time that they are in common. So let's actually do it. So what's the probability that a card is either a heart or a king? Well, we know that there's four hearts in the deck. We know that there's four kings in a deck. Now we need to decide, are there any times that a card is both an ace and a king? Yes, the king of hearts. So we actually need to subtract that one card uh, using the formula, so 4 plus 4 is 8, minus 1 is 7 out of 52. And that would be your answer. And the reason is because these four cards, you have the king of hearts in here. And inside these four cards, you're also counting the king of hearts. You can't count the king of hearts in both options, which is why you have to subtract. So using a chart, the... Irma Junction College Alumni Office surveys selected members of the class of 2000. Of the 254 who graduated, 172 were women, 124 of whom of that went on to graduate school. Of the male graduates, 58 went on to graduate school. So there's a bunch of numbers going on, but if you think about this in terms of a chart, let's actually make a chart. We know that we have a certain number of women, we have a certain number of men, and we know that the total amount that graduated was 254. Now, we know that 172 women graduated, which means that there were 82 men that graduated. Now, we know that they either did not go to graduate school, or they did go to graduate school. Now, 172 were women who graduated. 124 of them went to graduate school. So if 124 women went to graduate school, that means 48 did not go to graduate school. How did I get that? I just subtracted from the total number of women from the graduate school. Now, and by the way, I also found the men by at subtracting 254 minus 172 must have been 82 total men. Now, of the male graduates, 58 went to graduate school. So therefore, if 58 went to graduate school, that means 24 did not go to graduate school. 
We know that there's a total of 254 from that. Now, we want to know first, what is the probability that the graduate is a woman? So we have 254 people who graduated. 172 were women out of the 254. So that will be your answer. Or simplify. So if you simplified 172 divided by 254, you would get 86 over 127. Now we want to note of the, what's the probability that the graduate went on to graduate school? Well, we again know that there was 254 people who graduated. We need to know what's the probability that they, whether they were men or women, doesn't matter, that they went to graduate school. Well, 124 women went to graduate school, 58 men went to graduate school. So if you add those together, you get 183. So 183 out of 254 is the probability that the graduate went on to graduate school.